I've been answering online religious questions now and then over on the blog, and I thought, well, it might be interesting to do it here as well. I found a couple of questions asked by a theist named Tina and figured, what the heck, she gets the first treatment. On a side note, and this has nothing at all to do with Tina, and I'm certainly not making fun of her for it, but why does Google Hangouts make a lot of pictures look like they're using a fisheye lens? I mean, seriously, I looked at her picture and thought I was looking through a front door peephole. Just curious, and if you know why, put it in the comments below. So, let's see what Tina has to ask, and I'll do my best to provide answers. Hello, this is Tina, and welcome to my live broadcast, where I have some questions today. Again, I'll say my name is Tina, in case I said that too fast. Some questions for atheists. Uh, you know, atheists are the ones that don't uh, tend to believe in God or really anything. So, here's some questions I pose to you. As If you want to ask me questions, go ahead, but... Look, I can't answer everything because I'm not God, okay? Because only God knows everything, all right? But I don't, I just want to ask them some questions since they, these atheists say there isn't a God. Now, I know there's a God, right? And a lot of people know there's a God. Even scientists are starting to figure out there's a God, okay? But then you got the atheist, okay? So anyway. <clears throat> this starts out badly from the get-go. I'm sorry, Tina. Your first real sentence of note has two fatal errors. First... Atheists are not those who tend not to believe in God. They are those who don't believe in God's full stop. There is no tendency involved. That means that they could change their mind and selectively believe in God's if they chose to. Yes, they could, but then they would no longer be atheists. Secondly, the idea that atheists don't believe in anything is absurd. Atheists are just like everyone else. They just reject the claims of theists as unsupported. They can still believe anything else they want. Then she goes on to claim that she knows God exists. Nope. No, you don't. Neither you nor anyone else knows that God exists. You believe it. You have faith in it. But knowledge requires some demonstrable basis in reality. You need evidence. You need rationality. You can't just declare that you know God exists any more than someone can declare that they know leprechauns exist. It is really where discussions about religion go badly because you've got theists who don't know what they're talking about, nor how they get to any rational destination. That's not an insult. That's just reality. Okay, so anyway, my first question, and I asked God to help me go through these to kind of figure out what to ask people. Okay, atheist, Ahem. since you say that there is no God, uh, which there is, but since you say there isn't, then would you care to explain how man was formed and how uh, man was born from the womb? If you're like, well, I can't explain that. That's right, you can't, only because God can. You cannot explain how man is formed and how man is born. Now, you could say, oh, well, now the egg, you know, and then, the, well, to put this mildly, uh, <clears throat> You know, and the little squiggly thing, uh, you know, goes and fertilizes the egg. I got to be careful what I say. I know what I'm saying. And so you say, oh, well, then that fertilized the egg. So that's how they were born. Yeah. But when that egg is fertilized, what I'm trying to say is then a human being is formed out of that. Okay. Now, how do you explain that one? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, that's what you're about to say. Now, there's another problem. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm assuming that Tina is being sincere. But why would she ask God to help her read some questions? Is she not capable of communicating in the English language? If someone walked up to you on the street and said, Please, flying spaghetti monster, help me, you'd look at them like they were nuts. For someone who is trying to ask questions of atheists, that just doesn't bode well. And I love how she keeps repeating over and over that there is a God. Who's she trying to convince here? Certainly no atheist is going to go, Oh, Tina says so. How could I have been so wrong? Is she seriously suggesting that we cannot explain how pregnancy works? See, this is where a basic education comes in. Pretty much everyone today understands the way that the human body operates when they come out of high school. And then I have to wonder why she's asking questions of atheists if she thinks she just gets to answer them all too. What's the point? Oh, and by the way, Tina, that little squiggly thing, seriously... The word you're looking for is sperm, and even 12-year-olds know what that word is. I'm sure you can manage. And no, for your information, that wasn't what I was about to say. Developmental biology is an established scientific field. We know exactly what happens. It's just too bad that Tina has no idea. 
Now, because I have a feeling we're going to see this a lot through this video, I want to identify what Tina is doing. It's a logical fallacy called the argument from ignorance. It is the core of virtually all Christian apologetics. Essentially, it says, I don't understand X, therefore Y, or I don't like X, therefore Y. You can see it in many woo claims, such as when people say, well, I just don't know how the pyramids were built, therefore aliens must have done it. It's absurd there, and it's just as absurd in Tina's argument. Until you can demonstrate that God actually exists using objective evidence and logical argument, you don't just get to use God as a universal problem solver. That's just not how reality works. Um. Okay, now explain life and death, how we can have life and then we die. Now, who do you think has the power of life and death? It certainly is not you. It's not horses outside. It's not animals. It's not the planets. No, who has the power of life and death? And I'm going to guarantee you it's not you or anybody else. Who has the power of life and death? Hello, ring, ring, is God. And who has the power to put people into heaven or into hell? Uh, it's not you. It's not the planets in the sky. It's not the animals. It's not your grandma and grandpa, man. I mean, it's, it's not the weather. It's God who has the power of life and death and heaven and hell. Now, atheists are going to say, well, because I know what they are. They're like, well, I need proof. And, you know, they're going to be saying, oh, now, honey, you know, there's a heaven and hell. Okay. Would you like to explain life and death? Would you like to explain how you got here? Oh, I don't really. I got here because, you know, my parents, uh, you know, and, uh, well, you know, they got together and, well, that's how I got here, you know, because they, you know, the birds and the bees, so to speak. I had to be careful because who knows who's listening to this, but you get what I'm saying. Now, you got here because of God. I'm going to tell you that much right now. I'm honestly not sure why this is even a question. We understand life and death just fine. Google is your friend. You're just asserting that someone has the power of life and death. Certainly, we've got doctors that are pretty good at keeping the living alive, although that's certainly not infallible. Then she goes on to just answer the question. Apparently, she doesn't have this whole concept of asking people things and then waiting for a response down. That's how conversations work. And again, the ugly head of argument from ignorance rears its head. You don't get to arbitrarily demand that God did it because you don't have an education to know any better. How is saying God did it any better than saying a magical invisible leprechaun did it? Both are supported by the exact same amount of evidence. In other words, none. Then she asserts that there's a heaven and hell. Really? Prove it. Of course, she doesn't even try because she can't, and I suspect she's never even given it a second thought. I don't try to tell people what they're going to say, though, so I welcome a response from Tina that will set me straight. Now, okay, atheist, please explain the weather, the disasters, the tornadoes, the hurricanes, the floods, the earthquakes, the forest fires, the tsunamis, uh, the, the thunderstorms, all these disasters that people are going through today. Can you explain these weather disasters? No. You say, well, you know, they come from the sky. Yeah, they do come from the sky. Yeah. But can you explain how they're formed, how they start and then how they stop? Because, you know, you get a husami uh, or however you say it, or tornado, it'll, it'll start, and then and then it'll stop. So there's a start and a stop to it. Who do you think starts these this weather, and who do you think stops it? Uh, hello, God. It's not you or the weather itself. Okay, so, I mean, if you really sit there and think about these questions, ask them to yourself and write this stuff down. Now, who do you make? Who do you think made the seas and the oceans, the trees, the animals, and nature's, and all of creation? I'm going to tell you, creation didn't create itself, but some people like to think that. No, creation did not create itself. The plants did not create themselves. You know, scientists are starting to get the handle. Some scientists are starting to get the, there's a god. And that's good because there is a God. Okay. They're starting to understand that there's no way this stuff could exist unless there's a God. Hallelujah. At least they're starting to understand this. At least some scientists are getting it. Didn't say all of them, but some. Wait a minute. You're serious here. You have no idea what climatology and meteorology are. Yes, we can explain them very easily. We can even predict the weather to a certain degree of accuracy. Maybe you've never seen the nightly news. It's at this point that I start wondering if maybe I've caught a Poe, but I'll continue on and say that 
We've understood the weather for many hundreds of years. Maybe you remember that thing called Poor Richard's Almanac, written by Benjamin Franklin that told farmers when to plant? He understood the weather back then, too. We know this stuff, and it doesn't require any magical men in the sky to make happen. And no, scientists are not just starting to get this. I ignored it earlier when you brought it up, but the reality is that the majority of scientists are atheists. The National Academy of Sciences, the most prestigious scientific organization on the planet, is 93% atheist. According to every study out there, religion is failing miserably across the planet. In the latest Pew survey, religiosity in America fell 7% over the past 7 years, and those who are not religious rose by 10% in less than a decade. I don't know where you're getting this information. Oh right, you're not. You just want it to be true, so you believe it has to be true. And also in the Bible, now you could say, now who made God? God made himself. If you look in the Bible, see, I always wondered that too. You know, I was like, well, did somebody make God? No, God made himself. That's how powerful God is. And I forgot what scripture that was in, but I'm going to tell you when I looked at that, it was like, yeah, God. Okay. So it was God who made himself and made everything here on this planet. And even your blood, because I'm going to tell you what, God is the reason why you're here. The whole idea of anything creating itself is logically absurd. If God can create himself, then the universe could create itself using the same bit of illogic. But since I'm not playing this little it's true because I said so game that Tina is, I'll actually look at these claims critically with an eye to finding out what's actually true, not to just what's emotionally comforting. So let's be honest about what Tina has done to this point. She hasn't asked questions of anyone. She's having a conversation with herself, arguing for straw men for the atheist position, and then demanding that she's right just because she thinks she's right. Does anyone else see a problem here? I have another question for atheists. Dreams. Who controls your dreams when you go to bed? It's certainly not you. And if you have a nightmare or something goes on, I'm going to tell you, you're not controlling your dreams. God is controlling your dreams. And who answers prayers? Yes, there's a lot of people who have prayed. I haven't been the only one that's prayed and had answered prayers. Okay, not all of them are answered, but you know some of them are. And the ones that aren't, then God didn't want to answer them, so he had a reason for it. And I understand that. So God doesn't answer all prayers. And sometimes when God doesn't answer a prayer, someone will be like, well, God didn't answer my prayer. So, you know, I'm really mad now. Well, maybe God had a reason for it. Like some people might be praying, you know, like they might be like, oh, dear God, please, please give me a lot of children. And then what happens when they get a lot of children and all of a sudden they're pulling out their hair and they're like, oh, my God, I cannot believe I pray for this. You know, God knows your best interest at heart. So if certain things don't happen, that's just an example. No, then God knows that you couldn't handle it. So, <clears throat> but God has answered a lot of prayers. He will answer prayers, but not all of them. And it's in his will and in his time. You could say, man, I keep healing. I ask God to keep healing me and, and keep healing me. Well, keep asking, keep praying. Because one of these times God is going to be like, okay, but it has to be on his timing. You think it's on your timing when you're going to get healed? Okay, it's my time. Well, wait a minute. It's God's timing. Okay, so headaches and dizziness please be healed in jesus name then you're walking around you're like oh lord lord i still got this problem no what what i'm trying to say to people is that it can take a while and it's on god's time when he heals people okay so tina have you ever heard of lucid dreaming it's something many people can do or train themselves to do that puts them in control of their dreams but no you don't get it therefore god and nobody answers prayers this kind of absurd rationalization for failed prayers really is ridiculous. It's a perfect answer for anything that happens. God, help me find my car keys. If you find them, you give thanks to God. If not, then God didn't want you to have them. It's convenient that God is responsible no matter what happens. And God has your best interests in heart? Then why are there massive storms that kill thousands of people? Was it in the best interest of those people to die? What about children who die from cancer in agony? Is that part of God's plan too? Here's news for you, Tina. Your God is a dick. Now, what was I at? Was this, okay, who gives us comfort or, uh, or heals our sicknesses? Yes, doctors heal some sicknesses, but do you realize there are other sicknesses that cannot be healed? Like you take cancer, for example, or, you know, there, you know, there's some STDs that cannot be healed. Okay, I mean, they're just, but the only way 
that some people could be as if they pray to God and if God deemed it to heal them, they keep praying. And so, and then you go in the doctor and they're like, now, how did this happen, man? Because this isn't a disease that could be healed. Oh, I was praying to God and I was praying to God and, and I'm telling you, and this got healed. Now, if you don't get healed, let, let me say something really quick to people. If for some reason you don't get healed, God still loves you. There's just a reason why this is not happening. But if you get healed, hallelujah, amen, praise the Lord, either way, okay? But I'm just saying, because there's, there's doctors don't even know everything about the brain. But I tell you who does know everything about the brain, and that would be Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit. They know everything about us, all right? So who gives us comfort? Well, other people do. Some children have security blankets and imaginary friends, but we expect them to realize these things aren't real by the time they grow up. So what's wrong with the religious? And doctors have a heck of a better track record than God does. Do you know how many people pray to God to heal their children instead of taking them for medical care and their children die? Do you know how many of them die of things that are easily treatable? I'd say doctors are much, much better than God. I'd love to know how you keep giving God the easy way out. Oh, God could heal them. He just doesn't want to. How many amputees has God healed lately? None? Well, there's a surprise. And I'd love to see you produce medical records for people who are magically healed of diseases that are not treatable by science. Yes, we do know that there are some forms of cancer that can go into spontaneous remission on their own, but those people are not all Christians praying to God. In fact, it seems to work no matter what religion, even for people with no religion. How do you explain the atheist whose cancer goes into spontaneous remission? I'm sure you'll come up with some excuse. And then try to ask yourself if I can read my writing here. Explain... Okay, and then how the planets are formed. Now, you're going to have, science, you know, again, have some people say, well, now the planets formed themselves. No, they didn't. It was God who made the planets. But, you know, you got these evolutionists, these people who think that the planets just came into existence by themselves. No, they did not. God made the planets. I mean, hello. What did you know? But I think scientists start, some scientists are starting to see that, wait, there's too much going on here. So they're, they're starting to understand, like I said, which is great. But planets don't make themselves. God made the planets. God made this entire universe. You got to think everything is here. How in the heck did it get here? I mean, ask yourself some questions. Even, okay, I'm asking, like, say you might have something that's not on this list. And you say, well, gee, now how did this get here? Uh, God? Okay, thanks. No. <laughs> Why would you ask me if I can read your writing? I can't even see your writing. Maybe you should pray to God for help. And no, the planets didn't form themselves, but we do understand the physical laws that were responsible for it. Again, a basic high school education ought to answer all these questions. Nobody thinks that the planets came into existence by themselves. This is either something your fevered brain came up with or something that apologists have told you. Either way, you never bother to do the basic footwork to find out if these claims were actually true, which, let's be honest, I think pretty much describes your entire theological position. And again, she makes the entirely faulty claim that science is coming to realize that God is true. Nothing could be further from the truth. There are some apologists who play the science card, who pretend to be doing science while making religious claims. But here's the thing. Scientists aren't automatically doing science just because they have some letters after their names. They're only doing science when they're actually operating in accordance to what scientific evidence and the scientific methodology say. Atheists have asked ourselves a lot of questions, and then we went out looking for the actual truth, and that's something theists simply have not done. They start with an unsupported assertion, and then they pretend that it answers all questions. That's not being rational. The only answer you have in your arsenal is God, yet you've never stopped to wonder if it's actually true or if it's just something that makes you feel good. And here's the thing, I'm betting on the latter. I'm going to go into a couple more and then I'm going to be done with this. Um, but you have to realize that the Bible has been here for about 2,000 years. And that's a long time for, a, um, how do I want to say, a a, a a book to be around 2000 years and now we have churches i mean come on you gotta think that god wanted something here i mean how many other books do you read 
Well, maybe there's a few. I don't know. But I don't think there's many that have been around that long and then have churches after it and, and followers. No, God wanted this for a reason. You better believe that he wanted the Bible and this stuff out here for a reason. Just saying that right. Actually, it doesn't surprise me at all that she has no clue how long the Bible's been around. Now, if we're going to be talking about the Old Testament, it's been closer to 3,400 years since the earliest parts were written. The Bible has been through numerous changes and editing, which has put it into its current form. Of course, I'm pretty sure that this is way over Tina's head. I'm sure that if she's like a lot of clueless fundamentalists, she thinks that the King James Version of the Bible just appeared magically in English, and that's what Jesus spoke. Besides, it's not really that long for a book, even a religious book, to be around. The oldest known religious texts on record are the Egyptian pyramid texts, which date back almost 4,500 years, much older than the Bible. The texts of the Hindus are essentially complete 3,200 years ago, and the Enuma Elish, the religious text of the Akkadians, dates about 4,000 years ago. If you're going to pretend that age makes a difference, the Bible doesn't count. Tina is just ignorant of history and, let's be honest, pretty much everything else. Now, and then... The last one I got, if I could read my writing, explain all the, oh my goodness, I know I should have typed this down, explain all the something in the brain, oh, explain all the functions in the brain, that's what it was that I wrote, so can you explain all the functions in the brain, all the functions in the body, of the heart, of the liver, of, of, any function of the body, can you explain that, no you can't. Because the only one that can would be God because he's the one that formed you. He made you. If it wasn't for God, your little butt wouldn't be here and you wouldn't be able to complain or do anything or have anything. The only reason why you're here to complain or do what you do. I'm not saying everyone complains. That's not what I'm saying. But the reason why you're here to do what you're doing, whether it's joyful or whatever you're doing, but you're here because God put you here. That's all I'm saying. You just think you came out of nowhere? No. And once again, God lets Tina down. Is anyone surprised? And yes, medical science is doing a very good job explaining how the body works. We've mapped the brain. We know how it functions. We may not know all the finer details, but we do know what parts of the brain do what, and we certainly know that everything that makes us who we are is an emergent property of the brain. We're not some ridiculous spiritual beings. We are electrochemical reactions in the brain and nothing more. Yeah, that scares a lot of Christians because they want to feel like they're special. But the evidence that we have, well, that's the only place that it leads. And once again, Tina tells atheists what they think, and I'm really wondering if she's ever actually met an atheist in her life. I think that she's jousting at straw men, scared into her head by preachers from the pulpit. I've never met a single atheist who fits the claims that she makes. Never. And I don't think she has either. So what these atheists think is that they just came out of nowhere, or really, and, the, and then they think they're just going back to nowhere. I hate to tell them this, okay? I just, listen, please. Atheists, if you die and you die in your unbelief, because it says in the Bible, if you die in your unbelief, you are condemned, which means that there's a heaven and there's a hell, whether you want to believe that or not. So you're not going to understand what is happening to you when you die because you, you're under the belief that nothing exists. That's what their belief is. So when they die, they're going to be like, man, how come I'm going to hell? What, what, what's going on here, man? And take it from a person who's been to hell. I have been there. Yes, I have. I'm going to tell you it exists. But I don't care if you believe me or not. If you don't want to believe that it exists, well, look, this is all I could tell you. Is I've been there and you don't want to go there. I'm telling you the absolute truth. I swear on my life upon it. I swear on the Bible. When you really don't want to go to hell, you really, 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 really don't. Is it worth really chancing that? I'm just saying it's not so. Nobody thinks we came from nowhere and are going to nowhere. Nobody thinks that they just poofed into existence and will magically poof out again. Anyone who has told you that's the case is filling your head with lies, Tina. And of course, she has to run to the last bastion of religious absurdity, Pascal's wager. See, Tina, here's the thing. You're just assuming that your religion is true. The fact is, if your god isn't real, and say, the Hindu gods are, and if they have a version of heaven or hell, you're going straight to their hell. The same is true if Zeus is real, 
or Odin. There are many thousands of gods that man has worshipped over the years, and that doesn't include all the possible gods. What if the real god is something man has never come up with at all? That makes playing the odds a really, really poor choice. The chances of you ever getting it right, the chances of you ever picking the correct god, is somewhere between slim and none. And you've been to hell? Where's your evidence? Oh yeah, it doesn't matter if we believe your claims or not, but then again, if you don't care if nobody believes you, why are you making this video at all? It isn't like you're really asking anybody any questions, you're just talking to yourself. Just like when you pray. With that being said, I I'm going to quickly end this video because there's a a something else that I want to put up for people. But the this atheist, ask yourself some of these questions. In fact, ask questions that I didn't even ask. And see if something comes to you and then try to figure it out. And then if you can't, oh, gee, oh, duh. Oh, well, only God knows that. And I'm just being straight out with people. I ain't trying to start arguments or anything like that. I'm really not. I'm getting people to think, to open their minds. Say, wait a minute, man. That's all I'm trying to do. So I ain't trying to fight with nobody. Hey, if you want to keep believing, if you want to believe there's no God, then keep believing lies because that's what Satan wants you to believe. And once he gets you there, and so you continue to believe that because Satan is what who wants people to go to hell. It's not God. Why do people think it's God? God wants people to go to heaven. That's why he tells people about hell because he doesn't want them to go there. Have you ever thought about God does not want you to go to hell? So he's telling you these things, but what, what, what's really hard for people, and then I'm going to be quiet because I'm going to do another video on this, is that some people don't want to change their way of life or their living. So then they think, well, if I just believe this way, I can continue to do whatever I want, when I want, and I can, you know, I don't have to stop or change anything because that's a lot easier. So then I can just do this. Yeah, well, you just wait and see what happens when you pass over. <laughs> I'm still waiting for you to ask me any questions because you seem to think you already have all the answers. What makes you think atheists haven't already asked themselves all of these questions and many, many, many more? We've already examined your religion. We know it better than you do. We know why it's ridiculous, no matter what kind of emotional attachment you might have to your blind faith. You're not being straight out with people. You're just parroting the religious indoctrination that you've had shoved into your head, and you never stop to think, well, hey, what if it isn't true? Maybe I ought to find out. But no, the world is just a scary place without your religious security blanket where you can fantasize that some magical man in the sky is watching over you and taking care of you whether such a thing is really true or not. And you're not trying to get people to think. You're trying to get people to believe. You're trying to get people to stop thinking and start blindly adhering to your particular religious dogma. And the idea that Satan wants people to go to hell is ridiculous. You haven't even read your own book. God set up the criteria. God is the one hiding from humanity, and God is the one making the determinations. You're not showing up at St. Peter's Gate and talking to Satan. You're talking to God. So, if God wanted everybody to go to heaven, God would appear in Times Square right this second and prove without a doubt that he exists. Is he there? I didn't think so. And the childish threats aren't necessary. They don't make you or your beliefs look any better. In fact... They make it look a whole lot more immature, but maybe that's because at its core, it is. Well, that's a whole nother subject. So I'm going to end with this video, but atheists, ask yourself some of these questions, okay? Just saying. And you could say, well, how come babies are born the way they're born? Look, man, I don't know. God's got his reason why babies are born the way they're born. Like, you know, some might have a mental, they might be mentally handicapped or it could be something wrong with the child. But, Look, I don't know. God's got his reasons, but they all work for the good. You expect me to explain every reason God has got, and I'm not God? So how can I? I can't. Oh, well, they're like, well, and look, you've got free will. So God gave you free will, whether to believe or not. So, but I'm going to stop with this because this is, I'm telling you, it's going to get into a whole nother new topic. So just ask yourself these questions, okay? Thank you so much for listening. Feel free to put whatever you want down, whatever. Okay, but this is my video, so thanks, and God bless to all of you. I still love you all anyway, and I'm still praying for a lot of people. <laughs> With that being said, I'm out of here. Amen. Thank you. Bye. Speaking of the mentally handicapped, wait, no, that's cruel. 
But you have to admit, that's something everyone watching this video has thought. And no, I don't expect you to explain God's reasons. I expect you to provide a reason to think that God is real in the first place, and that's something you have entirely failed to do. In fact, you've really failed to do anything except show how laughably empty your faith really is. I don't know, maybe you can do better, but this is the first video I've ever seen of yours, and frankly, I'm not impressed and I doubt anyone else is either. These aren't questions for atheists. They're comforting platitudes for the religiously gullible, people who lack the will or the ability to critically evaluate their own beliefs and who don't actually care if their beliefs are real, so long as they make you feel good. I'm hoping that, beyond my regular atheist viewers, some religious people get to see this and wonder, wow, is that really how I look to the world? Yes, it is, and you ought to be embarrassed by it. Rational people don't act that way. Intellectual, educated people don't act that way. But then again, rational, intellectual, and educated people, they don't tend to be religious either. Wow, there you go. Some people ask how I can sit through these irrational screeds, and frankly, I don't know. I guess exposure makes it somehow bearable, and honestly, somebody has to do it. Why not me? There's so much ignorance out there in the world that it needs to be met head-on and exposed for what it is. I don't think for a second that any theist is going to change their minds because they're not believing intelligently. They believe because it feels good, and whether they like it or not, just feeling good isn't an intellectual reason to do anything. Thanks for spending time with me. Please comment, like, and subscribe, and come back for my next video. I'm available on all the social media sites, plus I have a weekly podcast and a blog that you can visit as well. Until next time, take care.